Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be talking some light chemistry. We're going to be talking about titanium dioxide and tattoo pigment. All right. Okay, now that's over. TiO2, this is the chemical writing namey thingy for titanium. Ti, dioxide. Di means two. Oxide is oxygen. So two oxygen molecules, one titanium, and what it has to do with tattoo pigment. Have you ever heard of TiO2 or titanium dioxide? Uh, this may be a great little rebuff, a little buffer course or something for you. If you haven't, we'll let you know that this is white. Realistically, like TiO2 is sourced from a, a mineral called rutile. It's a rock, right? It's just a white rock. And uh, to put it in a tattoo pigment, they don't just take a rock and like crush it up. No, of course, they're going to try to extract this in its most purest form. And then they're going to take it and they're going to crush it up nanoparticle scale, right? So these little tiny bits of mineral. And they're going to put that into a tattoo ink bottle, right? Let's draw a little ink bottle here. Boop. And they put this in there. What do we use TiO2 for? More often than not, it's going to be used to like change the consistency of the pigment, right? By adding it, we can usually make it a little bit thicker. It's gonna be a thickening agent, right? Um, and we can also use it to increase the lustrousness of the pigment. That's in question, right? So I'll make it more bright, which bad English, just go with me. More bright. So thickening agent part is, this is a performance enhancing product, right? So when we add it to a pigment, maybe that's running a little bit thin, not only is it gonna make it appear a little bit brighter, maybe even a little bit lighter, but it's also gonna help thicken it up. It's a caking agent, anti-caking it in dry foods, right? It's gonna thicken it up. It's like putting cornstarch and water and adding it to your gravy. Um, it's great that way. I mean, usually you can tell if you've got TiO2 in your pigment by just leaving it alone for a while. And you'll see this like white stuff gather at the bottom, right? Um, I mean, it can be another thing, zinc oxide as well, but more often than not, TiO2 is used more now because one, it comes out actually looking white, even though it's not white, which we'll get into in a second, uh, in comparison with the uh, zinc oxide, which tends to have more of a grayer tint to it. And at the same time, the particles can be designed at different sizes based on grinding, and they can get smaller on average than you can with things like zinc. Um, so the more bright thing is unique with TiO2. Um, most people think that white pigment is white. But titanium dioxide is not white. Actually, it's clear, right? Boink. So you have a bunch of these little particles, right? But this is TiO2 that are going to be suspended in, in the pigment solution, whatever, right? Um, but they're not, they're not actually white. They're clear. And what happens is light can pass through them, but these act like small prisms. You know prisms, right? If you, if you hang one by a light source, it, it spreads out all the visible light waves, right, in the spectrum, so you can see them like the rainbow, right? These act like that. They separate those light waves, and they end up bouncing light in all different directions. Now, what happens is, when you get a bunch of these particles together, right, the thicker and more, like, accumulated, agglomerated that they get, they end up bouncing all through all of this stuff. And when they do that, the output is all of those wavelengths of light, visible light, that come out, and it equals white. It's not actually white, though. It's clear. Kind of interesting. So, why is this important when we're picking out our tattoo pigments? Well, one, we need TiO2 to be in our pigments because that refractory ability of the pigment is actually going to be utilized by some companies to increase that vibrancy of a color, right? Not only are they going to be using pigments that may be um, contain additives like azo pigments, things like this that are currently banned in the EU and other countries, um, but they're going to use these because those light reflecting properties, right, refracting properties, are going to be able to, let's say if we have a bunch of TiO2 that's surrounding a pigment that's, you know, red, um, if these TiO2 particles are manufactured to a specific size to output only the red wavelength of light, they can use that to amplify the amount of red light that's coming in contact with that red pigment, which in turn is going to increase the amount of red, right, that's actually going to be seen by the viewer's eyes. Um, of course, this is going to be filtered by the skin and a bunch of other biological processes, but this is realistically like why you do this, right? They add this in here to make things look brighter. 
Now, what's the problem with it? Well, because these particles of titanium dioxide are so small, right? If they're very, very small, we're talking nanoscale, right? The cells of the body, if we say this is just a skin cell, right? Boop, boop, boop. Um, they'll be able to pass through them or attach to them, causing the cell to lyse, break down, and therefore opening up basically a channel or pathway for those pigments to fall through your skin and slowly get absorbed by your body. What does that mean? As the tattoo ages and these extra small particles of pigment fall down through the body, they're absorbed into it and sometimes they're carried away. Most often they just collect in the lymph nodes. But we won't get into the health consequences of this because that's not really my job right now. Um, what we're going to be doing is discussing what this does to your tattoo. So as these pigment particles start to float away and not be apparent anymore, the quality of the white that you're going to see degrades, right? And because there isn't enough pigment particles to refract that light effectively off of each other to create the white that you see, it's going to slowly fade into nothing. Get it? That's why a lot of the TiO2 titanium dioxide based white pigments that you see slowly fade because they're actually being absorbed into the body. At the same time, these particles are highly attractive to each other. Titanium dioxide tends to pull together, right? They're attracted like a magnet. So what happens is, even though you have all these pigment particles all evenly spaced when you first put them in the tattoo, they, they tend up to aggregate together. So if you have a line that you've put into someone's skin initially and it looks great, you know, once it's healed, it still looks great a little while down the line, you start seeing these breaks in it, that's because those pigment particles are actually starting to pull together. And as more of them come together, there's gonna be more force put on the cellular makeup of the skin underneath, which is in turn gonna force them to migrate further down to the body, accelerating that decay of the ability to see white. Cool, hey? So what can we do about this? Well, one would be to use less titanium dioxide and tattoo pigment, but because we don't have a choice over our predispersed pre pigments, we can't really just make that call, right? What you can try to do is find an even mix of TiO2 and zinc oxide pigments, right? TiO2 and zinc oxide. I don't know. I think it's ZNO, but I don't, I don't remember the chemical signature because I didn't come prepared today, evidently. Um, anyways, <laughs> if you find these two together, even if you start losing some of the titanium dioxide as it's flowing through the skin as the skin ages, the zinc oxide base is still going to stay there because on average the flakes of these are going to be much larger. They're going to be manufactured a little bit quicker. They don't take as much time to try and reduce those pigment particle sizes down to increase the amplificative, uh, uh, the amplifying effects. Jeez, man, I'm having a hard day today. The amplifying effects of, of that, you know, prismatic color refracting ability that this has, right? They just want to make white. So when you put this in, yeah, it may heal out and look maybe a little bit yellow, a little bit brown because zinc oxide is also like reactive to heat. I mean, extreme heats that turns yellow, even though it looks white. And when it's in your body, they can also pick up, pick up stuff because it donate. Anyways, we don't have to get into super heavy chemistry. It can turn colors when it gets into your body. That's all you should know probably. Well, maybe we'll do something that's more of a deep dive into that later on. And I, I don't have to get ahead of myself, but that's realistically like if you want to have something that is going to be white, find out what those bases are. Um, the easiest way to do that is look on the label, right? If your pigment comes to the label, you're going to see something that has this CI number. This is a color index number, right? Now, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide have different color indexes because they're different bases. So look up the color index number that's on your pigment, right? Go to Google, type in the number and see what it is. Learn where it's manufactured, what it is, right? Who makes it, how it's put in the bottle, Find out if you can through the MSDS or contacting the companies directly what the percentage of this quantity or type of pigment that is in there is in there, right? And then you can start making judgments about how best to use your whites. That's it. Titanium dioxide and tattoo pigment. It's not really white, it's clear. Hopefully you know a little bit more and you put up with me, yeah, messing up English bad today. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it. And so I say goodbye. I don't know. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off.